Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to adjust your DPI for your laser to get different effects. Let's get into it. First, let's talk about what DPI is. DPI is the number of dots there are per inch of your design. So if it's 75 dots per inch, it's going to be 75 dots that make up each square inch of the design. Sometimes this DPI can also be referred to as your resolution when it comes to your machining, uh, as well as when you are working in your graphics design file. A lot of things like photos are in the 300 DPI range, depending on what you're doing. Super intricate items are more than that, say 600 DPI. And something that's low resolution it would be 75 DPI, 150 DPI, something like that. The lower the resolution, the less dots there are going to be, and therefore the more blank space or open space your design would have. So if you have a square block that is just black at 75 DPI, you'll start to see some gaps in your design. When you get up to 500, 600, 700 DPI, that design will be completely filled in and will look like it is seamless and a filled in box. Now, depending on your machine, you may have a different way of adjusting your DPI. Now for me, with the epilogue laser engraver that I have, all I have to do is adjust the resolution in the print dialog box. Now there's an effect that occurs when you adjust your DPI. So adjusting your DPI will affect the time it takes to machine your design. The lower the DPI, the faster it's going to machine, the higher the DPI, the slower it's going to machine. Now I made an example of this. So here on the left is 75 DPI. Here on the right is 500 DPI. You can see a little bit of white space in this one, but not a whole lot, or I should say blank space that isn't filled in. This one, there's a lot more space in between the dots. And this is the effect that adjusting your DPI will have. Now keep in mind, this is also set to the color green when I machined it. So say black or blue may have a different DPI look than this would. Uh, and I'll go over that in a second. So here in this example where I have the 75 DPI, this one took about, I don't know, 15 seconds, maybe a little bit less. The one on the right here that was 500 DPI took over a minute. Just by adjusting your DPI, which will give you different looks, this will change your machine time pretty drastically, especially if this design is much bigger. Now I also ran a few more tests using the primary colors as well as black. So black, red, green, and blue when it comes to the design. So what I did was I took the solid color and all I did was adjust the DPI when it went from left to right. So this one is a test where I adjusted the DPI from left to right. So this one is 75 down this column. This is 150, 300, 500, and 1000. And you can see that based on the colors, so the first row I used black, the second row I used red, the third I used green, and the fourth I used blue. So this means that for the RGB value, these are all set, so red, green, and blue are all set the same. The red was set to 250, and then green and blue were zeroed out. Green would have been 250, and the rest were zeroed out, and so on and so forth. So when I did this test to see what would happen, you can see different results depending on the color you use. So between the combination of your color, as well as your DPI, you can get different effects and different looks. Now on wood, it doesn't look so drastic. It basically just changes the shade and the depth. You can kind of see some of that depth change. So on black, it's a little bit deeper, has more of a groove. Then on red, it's a little bit lighter. Green is even lighter and then blue, it gets deeper again. So depending on the look you're going for, you can adjust your color and your DPI to get those different effects. Now, this may depend on your machine. Uh, the way my machine is set up, this is how this result comes out. 
I did do the same thing on anodized aluminum. So the first row is black, then red, then green, then blue again. And you will see that there are different effects depending on the color as well as DPI again. So again, this is 75 DPI, 150, 300, 500, and 1000. So you can see that with black, there are gaps, but it's more of lines when it does it. The red, you start to see some more spacing. And then the green is actually almost a mirror image of what the black would be. So the negative space here is the opposite of the negative space for the green. And then blue is kind of an in-between the black and the red, where you have a little bit less negative space and there's still that line effect. So again, keep in mind that all I changed in this test was the DPI from left to right, and then the color between the rows. So just by changing the colors, but leaving the DPI the same, you can see different effects and you can get different designs and do a lot of cool different things. So all the testing I did is purely to show you what changing your DPI would do as well as showing you that there is an effect based on the color that you choose. Now again, this is what my machine does that I have set up here. Your machine may behave slightly differently. So I encourage you to do a similar test and see what happens. The DPI is just one of the levers that you have under your control to change the outcome of your design. Between DPI, your dithering pattern, changing the grayscale, there's a ton of options that you have just in the machine controls that will give you drastically different results. So you cannot do anything different in the design other than maybe change the grayscale. And you can end up with two different complete design looks just based on changing some of these levers. The main purpose of this video was just to show you what changing the DPI would do how that can give you different effects and the influence that color has along with the DPI and that combination to give you different results. I encourage you to run your own test and see how they go and start using DPI as a lever when you're using your designs. If you want a nice, clean, filled in smooth look, I suggest using at least a 500 DPI and up. If you want something that looks more open space and has a little bit different design intent, I would suggest playing and with the DPI and lowering that limit and getting those different effects. Now it does show better on aluminum than it does on wood, but depending on the material you're using as well as the settings, you can get a lot of cool results. Now keep in mind in these tests, I ran the same exact power and speed on all of the aluminum ones and all of the wood ones, but by adjusting those in combination with the DPI, you get even more results. So really the possibilities could be endless if you are just changing one thing at a time and altering it just a little bit. So this is where your creativity can come in and you can see what you like aesthetically, what is pleasing to you, and start changing up your designs with a few different things that aren't going to require a ton of design work. So hopefully this video has been helpful. If it has, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. And be sure to check out my Instagram at Maker Experiment where I share things along the way. I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one.